Hi, I'm Tom Zimmerman from the EMDR podcast. This episode addresses one of the most common questions people ask as they're learning more about flash approaches. Um, and that question is, if, if, flash, if flash is so good, why don't we just do this only? Why don't we you know, tackle everything uh, with flash? And I guess it's a sensible enough question it's, but for me, it's also a little bit of a bizarre question um, because in it very often there's this, this impulse to assume that one has to come at the expense of the other um, or that um, doing one um, somehow, you know, cost the other. So it's, uh, I think it's a little bit of a false dichotomy. And the way I think about it is I think about them as tools. So um, thinking about one in opposition or in direct contrast to the other is a little bit of an unusual way to think about a tool. Like why would, why would a flathead screwdriver necessarily have any kind of um, conflict with needle nose pliers? They're, they're different tools. It's good to have them. Um, and we don't need to think about one uh, purely in terms of opposition or in some kind of competition with another. Um, one is a tool and it, it, it is good. The other is a tool and it is good. Um, let's let them just sit um, on the counter, um, on the workbench together. And when, when the situation um, suggest one tool, we can use that. When a situation suggests another tool, um, we can do that. Um, however, <laughs> this, is, this is another thing, is that um, there may be, I mean, when it comes to really transformational trauma therapies, most therapists aren't trained in transformational trauma therapies. And if um, therapist only had one tool, flash approaches would be a pretty handy tool. Um, I'd rather the average therapist have that tool than many, many, many other tools um, because they're going to see and they're going to facilitate a lot of healing. Um, but, but again, um, flash approaches practiced well can make you a more effective EMDR therapist. So uh, one of the things I also, that also comes up related to this, so there are two, um, there are two parallel impulses that come up when people start to see flash as this potential way to help clients work with memories. One is, well, you know, if this is so good, why don't we only do that? And then there's this other, which is like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. If we work on all these memories with flash, what about all the good stuff that comes um, from the EMDR journey? What about the, um, you know, the capacity to sit with and tolerate distress? What about all these resources that we need to do for, you know, in preparation for the EMDR journey? Um, what about the opportunity for insight to come while we're sitting with and noticing um, inside reprocessing? Um, all of that is good, but there's this assumption on the other end that somehow we're gonna process all of the client's trauma with flash and we're not gonna have time for EMDR. And my only question is, is have you ever met a client with complex trauma? <laughs> there is, there, we, we are not going to run out of targets, right? So on one hand, clients need to heal. They need to heal. Flash will get you there, right? Clients need to heal. EMDR with a client who's prepared for the journey will get you there. So um, there is plenty of time. There's plenty, plenty of time to prepare people for the EMDR journey, to do other interventions while you're doing that, to help facilitate healing even while you're doing that. Um, so 
we're not going to run out of targets. Another thing that, that a lot of people do is, um, and this comes out of very early um, flash, you know, very early flash trainings, very early flash writings, is that what they'll do, and again, it's okay if you do this. I'm, this is not a critique. I'm just asking you to evaluate the reasons and motivations why you may be doing this, is that people will say, well, I'm gonna flash this down, you know, to a one, two, or three um, suds, distress, and then we're gonna pivot to EMDR, and then we're gonna process that one, two, or three. And you can do that. I mean, you can do that. I'm just gonna share my logic for why when I start with flash, we're likely to finish with flash in that session. So, so if, if clients need to heal and we're starting a session because we're working on a memory that, that may need to heal. So, you know, this, this whatever, typically whatever I work on with flash is something that's really contributing to current distress with the goal of, you know, particularly early on with a client with complex trauma, we're working on this target to kind of clear it out so that we can address current distress with the hopes that clients can unburden, get their feet under them, be a little bit healthier. Um, my preference is that if we start with flash, um, let's go ahead and end with flash. So if we're gonna get on an airplane, fly over all of the difficulties of which we're not prepared at this point, um, we're not prepared to, uh, to travel across, right? We're not prepared to cross the Mississippi. We're not prepared to cross the Grand Canyon. If we need to go from Cleveland to San Francisco, and I'm starting with flash, I'm going to end with flash. We're going to, you know, process that down to a zero um, with flash, typically. Um, and the reason I do that is that... Um, it's just more efficient. So why would I get on a plane in Cleveland? Because the client needs to go, you know, the client has selected to go um, to San Francisco today. Why would I get on a plane in Cleveland and fly to Las Vegas and then get off the plane in Las Vegas and get in a car and drive from Las Vegas to San Francisco? Um, sure, there are things that the client may be able to experience between Las Vegas and San Francisco. But what I'm asking, um, I'm asking you to consider is why would we do that, right? Why would we do that? And who's making that decision to do that? I think a lot of the times that, that this idea came in, we're gonna flash it down to a certain number and then go the last bit of the way with the NDR is because, um, Flash five years ago wasn't reliably, predictably, you know, getting you there. It was getting you most of the way there. And what that really has to do, I think, is that we didn't know how to do flash approach as well. Um, you know, we were still figuring it out. So um, this idea that somehow it's a better, more effective, you know, effective way that the moment, you know, a little glitch or a hiccup comes in flash and the suds doesn't fall, that somehow we need to pivot to something else. And all I'm saying is that if clients need to heal, let's let them heal. Let's not assume that, that this way of healing is a deeply and inherently flawed way. Clients need to heal. Let them heal. Let them complete this journey in the way, you know, in the way of their choosing. And if the suds goes to a two, um, there's a reason it's a two. And do you know what that reason is? It's something to identify. It's something to put your finger on. It's something to put in your container, push out of awareness, go in your calm scene and blink. And if you do that well, that two is likely to become a one. And a little while later, you identify that one, put it in your container, push it out of your awareness, load up your calm scene. In a little bit of time, that one is gonna be a zero. So again, I don't, mean to, I don't mean to be critical. I don't mean to be a jerk, you know, but uh, all I'm asking is that we consider, you know, if we're, if we're going to go on this journey and we're going to go on this journey in particular ways and we're going on this journey because clients need to heal, 
let's not get too wrapped up or overthink um, how exactly clients need to make this journey. There's time to do flash. If clients work on five or six or seven memories um, with flash, do you know what they've done? They've done some healing. And what in the world is wrong with that? If you do, you know, three flash sessions and five EMDR sessions, and then you come back and you do another, you know, three or four memories across two sessions with, with, with flash approaches, all of that is good. Um, it, it, it's okay. It's okay. So I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to say is let's let things that are good simply be good. Um, let's not uh, introduce <laughs> conflict and competition where there really doesn't need to be. This is incredibly, incredibly good news. If you are a very good, very talented EMDR therapist and flash now becomes a tool that you have in your toolkit, that is only good. You're gonna be able to work with clients much, much faster. And the clients that really you most wanna help, you're gonna have a tool to be able to, to assist them way, way sooner and, and help get them there, help them unburden. So um, again, the world is full of trauma. We have very, very few effective, rapid ways of, um, of unburdening, of rescuing the self from the past. My goodness, let's not let the few that we have fight it out um, over, over what? <laughs> over, over nothing that's real. So, um, so don't beat yourself up right? Go on this journey the way you and your clients um, have selected to go on this journey on the way, in a way that makes sense for you, in a way that makes sense for your clients. Um, people need to heal. Thank goodness we have rapid, um, elegant, efficient ways to help facilitate that. So thank you for joining. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I, uh, I'd love to help uh, fill in any kind of um, any kind of potholes you may have. So so thanks a lot. You take care. Bye bye.